It's a lovely evening in Sheffield tonight where snooker always provides the soundtrack and the rhythm to life in this city for these special 17 days in the spring. And that's true whether you're inside or outside the Crucible Theatre tonight because there's DJ Thunder Muscle, a.k.a. six times world champ Steve Davis on the decks after a fortnight in which the biggest names in the game have all been floored. What an opportunity stretches in front of the four players who remain. Pick your winner from this quartet. I've been known to miss a red flag I've been known to put my lover on a pedestal In the end, those things just don't last And it's time I take my rose-colored glasses off Hello again. Do you like what we've done with the place? Yep, it's that time again. It's one table time here inside the Crucible. Gone is the dividing wall and the cramped queuing conditions. Instead, we've got acres of space and a very long way indeed between the players' seats and this table. Because overnight, this little theatre has been transformed into the best playing arena for snooker in the world. Just in time for the closing stretch in this year's Kazoo World Championship. And before us, between now and Saturday evening, are the semi-finals. Four sessions in each, and these are the four men who are contesting them. And Kyron Wilson is the only seeded player left here in Sheffield this year. And the world number 12 got underway against Dave Gilbert this afternoon, who is one of a record equaling three qualifiers to make it to the last four. They've shared their opening frames for a piece. And tonight we get going in our other semi-finals. Stuart Bingham, fresh from knocking out favourite Ronnie O'Sullivan, is now the only man standing who's had hands on the trophy before. And the 2015 champ plays a fellow qualifier this year in 30-year-old Jack Joe. He sent world number two Judd Trump home and the Welshman is in uncharted waters this evening, the only player making his debut in the one table stages. Now, of course, our former champions, John Parrott and Neil Roberts, know this situation very well indeed. So how special, how thrilling is it to be back out here once again, Neil? Well, me personally, yeah, it's been a few years, so I snuck in through the back door. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it's certainly nice to see. You know, it's like it's a completely different environment now, going from the two-table setup to the one-table all the eyes are on you, you know, there's no other sort of action from the other table. So, um, yeah, it's fascinating because the, the, the first session today was brilliant with Karen um, and Dave, and uh, so we're certainly hoping for the same tonight. Inspiring you to get back here yourself, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. This is part of the punishment in losing. I have to uh, watch every <laughs> yeah. frame that takes place. OK, well, curiously, John, and rather amazingly, this is only the second time that this has happened. Since 1977, where there were three qualifiers to get through, but there were only eight seeded players, mm. not 16 back then. So we're in kind of unprecedented territory. What an opportunity for the four guys standing. Yeah, and that's part of the, the puzzle we've got to solve. You know, who's going to cope with that? This is a fantastic chance for four people. They'll all be looking at this thinking, I could be champion of the world in a few days time so that comes with the pressure itself you know another added bonus in the pressure stakes can you cope with that as well absolutely two big talking points obviously neil uh, we have no ronnie o'sullivan so stephen hendry breathes a sigh of relief obviously <laughs> at this point but not only that ronnie has relinquished his world number one title and it means that we have to say a very big congratulations to mark allen who ascends as the 12th player ever to reach that milestone what a wonderful reward for two wonderful years of hard work from him yeah mark's definitely been the most consistent player over that period of time as well and uh, he's got his due uh, reward for that and um, yeah he'll be disappointed obviously to lose but I guess that um, you know there's a little bit of a um, little bit of positivity I suppose to take from that that the fact he is going to end the season as number one. He is watching of course I'm sure events tonight and we've got Stuart Bingham now one of only eight <laughs> world champions who got here Stuart was mm. the only one to qualify what might we expect against Stuart because he was the underdog against Ronnie he's a favorite tonight surely. Yeah, um, Jack's been... I mean, you made a point yesterday, you were talking to us about you think Jack's pretty good when he's second favourite. Do, do you still believe that? Yeah, I th I th well, I think anyone really is that if you can sort of coast through the draw as sort of being the underdog, even though Jack feels as though his chances are better than that, um, it is a nice position to be in because, you know, all the pressure is on you to sort of be the aggressor in the match. So, 
once you get down to the semi-finals, though, in particular the World Championship, everyone fancies their chances. And so it'll be interesting to see how both players handle being, what, in their eyes, the favourite, whereas the previous round, you know, they were the slight underdogs going in. Absolutely. We're looking forward to see how he copes. I know he's not even been out here to sample the one-table arena as yet, so this is going to be a big moment for him. Now, talking about renewing acquaintances... These guys have only met once on the match table before, and it was a couple of years ago in the Gibraltar Open. It was the younger man, Jones, who brushed Bingham aside 4-0 en route to his only semi-final before this one tonight. And I'm sure he'll be hanging on to that memory. It does mean a lot, having that Mopri, that, that experience, knowing we can do it. Um, but it, Mopri makes it harder as well, because I have done it and trying to do it a second time is even tougher. The Crucible and the World Championships is a totally different kettle of fish. So um, it's just something new for me. Um, hopefully I'll manage it okay. Take each session as it comes, each ball as it comes and see what happens. Jack Jones, great player, qualified. He, obviously last year he got to the quarters. You can't, you can't phase him. He's been playing top top class snooker. Like, and he obviously out there, he, he loves it like I do. It brings out the best of him, so uh, I'm sure it'll be a great game. Stuart's a class player, he's won here before as well. He's got a lot of experience. So it's going to be extremely tough playing him over, over a long match as well. Yeah, I'll look forward to it. I'm sure any of the other three guys in the semi final will be fancying like this, this could be my year, this, this could be me world champion. It'll be a hard slog, three days, but we'll see what happens. Well, both of these men have already come through five matches, including two in the qualifiers, to be here. And because of that, this championship is already 20 days long for both of them. And I wonder what still lies ahead, John. Yeah, this is a big, big night for Jack Jones. I, I mean, as indeed for, for Stuart, because, of course, he'd love to be a, a dual world champion. But for Jack, this first session is very important. Well, it's a much quieter corridor backstage from here on in, isn't it? Both players alone with their thoughts ahead of what is a thrilling moment in the career of any snooker player. So here we go. Are you ready at home? We're ready here in Sheffield. MC Rob Walker, let's get them on their way. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When the draw was made for this year's Kazoo World Snooker Championship, many people were predicting tonight would be the start of an epic semi-final between Trump and O'Sullivan. But this famous old arena is no respecter of reputations, and their two quarter-final conquerors are about to be greeted with a rapturous reception from the Crucible crowd ahead of a truly fascinating match. Welcome to the legendary single-table setup here in the city of steel, Sheffield. <laughs> no place like it. Please welcome a player who produced the most remarkable upset in quarterfinal history last night, beating one of the sport's most prolific winners, Judd Trump, with a brilliant display. Today, he becomes the seventh Welshman ever to reach a world semi-final. Here he comes, the giant-killing silent assassin, Jack Jones. <laughs> His opponent, he too produced one of the best wins of his career last night, beating Snooker's greatest of all time, just as he did in 15 at the same stage en route to the title. It has been a simply extraordinary return to form for one of the best break builders in the modern game, the pride of Essex, Stuart Ballround Bingham. <laughs> Well, 
Well, what an occasion for both Stuart and Jack. They've toppled the world numbers one and two on their respective journeys. Who's going to take the next step into the Crucible final? It's a best of 33 frames match, eight frames to play this evening, and the company of a great Thanks, double guys. act this evening. Ken Doherty and John Virgil. Good evening to you both.